Good day, Dr. Knight. My name is Livia Kanda, and this is my PowerPoint presentation for ESS 221. Today, I will be talking about umbrella plan as related to food security um, in, on a global scale and in South Africa. So this is a table of content. I'll first introduce the project, the modeling of Nishi and also the introduced, and I'll also introduce my species, which is um, the umbrella pine, the research objectives. And I will also talk about um, umbrella pine as a species in South Africa. And I will also inter interpret um, the maps from that I got from GBIF and also um, the maps that I got from Diva and also how um, what they mean for for the country and also on a global scale. So how, the methods that I used to collect the data that is in my PowerPoint was was first we downloaded Diva and then we were gave our species and then we had to retrieve data from GBIF, collect the data and put it on Excel sort it out and then um, and then cut it down to a thousand a thousand records and then so that we were able to put it onto diva and everything else was from diva and we also had to do i also had to do research on 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 my species about certain factors that um, are applicable to it Environmentally, the species, my species is um, the umbrella pine, with, which has a scientific name that is a penis pinae. So environmentally, the species adopted is adopted to high temperatures and drought characteristics of the Mediterranean climate. It is not a fast growing species and its timber does not have um, much value but its value comes from um, the nuts but I'll firstly talk about introduce the what the global niches are and what the whole food security concept is about so um, a global niche or the niche project are uh, is a competition to develop and protect biodiversity which means that we have to secure food security because it is it is becoming more and more vulnerable today because of we grow um, we grow crops where they're not supposed to grow or where the where they don't naturally occur, which makes um, a bigger ecological footprint. So if we grow food at places where they're supposed to grow and not take it not take that plant and or maybe in places where the the climatic conditions are favorable for that species then it makes it decreases our the ecological footprint in that area so in trying to understand the food species we use global niche models therefore um, the niches um, consider the environment and the role wherein the species occurs. And then it is so, um, all in all, a global niche is where the, 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 the organism occurs. So, um, so um, the umbrella pine is um, a species that is native to a northern Mediterranean basin that extends from Portugal to Syria. It is a medium-sized con coniferous tree that is about 12 to 30 meters um, high, forming an umbrella-shaped crown, hence the name, with a dense foliage of maturity. The umbrella pine is known and is commercially important for its highly nutritional edible seeds. Like I said, that the timber of the tree is not that valuable, but the value of the 
species comes from from the the plant that it produces. So the wood the wood is low quality, but it is locally used for furniture. And stone pine go stone pine, um, which is another name for umbrella pine. Uh, it grows the species grows well in dry and sunny areas with temperatures uh, with high temperatures, but it is it is also able to tolerate frost. So the species is a uh, very the species that um very that is very adaptable that adapts to its environment. Um. So the Pinus pinnae or the umbrella pine is characterized by the phenotypic plasticity and the tolerance to harsh soils and climates, but the low differentiation in growth parameters and the, it has a low genetic variability. And the species, as we know in South Africa, is a colonizer and a stabilizer of eroded soil. In South Africa, it is classified as an invasive species. So um, it has been reported that the stone pine can grow over more than 8.6 million hectares, with over 4.8 million hectares being suitable for medium to high levels of pine production. So not all of the trees, um, not all of the trees produce pine, um, which is a, a factor that I will touch on later on. Uh, China has, um, no, sorry, not China, North America is um, the largest uh, producer of, of the crop and Asia is the second largest one. So the, the, the pictures here show the major nutritional benefits or the health benefits of pine nuts, which, are, which has been some of the um, the causes for the crop to to become um, something that has been paid more attention and has been an opportunity for economic development for some countries recently. And the other picture shows um, the benefits of pine nuts, and I will elaborate on that some more on the next slide. So. Um, like I mentioned, um, Italy is the largest grower of the species and it is also a global supplier of pine nuts. So these trees are very slow when they grow and they are, they are very adaptable trees, like they can tolerate and thrive and grow in both wet, wet, um, in both wet and dry conditions. The seedling trees can start um, producing cones in um, six to eight years, which is why they are very good with adapting to the changing climatic conditions. But it could take longer if they grow on poor soils. This is dependent on the on how the trees grow. So the better the treatment you give to the trees, then the better they will produce. Than that. Um, each cone holds about 50 to um, 100 nuts and 100 kg of cones hold about 20 kg of nuts, um, meaning that the annual yield of nuts are about 5 kg per tree. So with um, 100 trees per hectare, this yields of um, this, mm, sorry, with a hundred with a hundred trees per hectare, this yields of um, rain, with this yields from five hundred to one point five kg of nuts per hectare. Um, so this slide is the research objectives, which which are the questions that I will try and answer or the point of all of this PowerPoint. So firstly, where are the umbrella pine currently found? The, the, as I mentioned earlier, the species is native to 
to the northern Mediterranean, which is, it is mostly found in southern Europe of the country, Europe of the world. And so the, and the second question is how will the umbrella pine distribution shift under changing climate? So the, what we, these questions are what we will see in the, in the map the maps, the the, bio, the global species, uh, what will show us how the distribution of um, umbrella pine um, will change the factors that influence the, dis the distribution and how is the distribution expected to change in South Africa. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the results will show how the distribution um, how the crop is currently distributed and how it will change um, it will change with the changing climate or with the current climatic crisis that we're facing. So some of the results will be um, will be through bioclim uh, and domain distribution, the limiting factors and the eco crop. So the bioclimatic variables are derived from the monthly temperature rainfall values to generate more biologically meaningful variables. So the variables show annual trends, seasonality, and the limiting factors. So um, the legend that is on the top left of the map indicates that areas of orange no, um, from the the white areas is no data and excellent, which means that it is more, um, it is high or it is, yeah, uh, as red, red is very high sustainability and orange, yellow, um, lime to dark green, which is very low of the distribution therefore the parts that are yellow orange or red according to the biochem have climatic conditions that are suitable for the umbrella pine um, distributions and we can see that in southern europe the the more um, orange and the better climatic conditions for for the umbrella pine species than in any other places where um, places like South Africa has a lower percentile. Um, so this slide shows the, the future global bioclim distribution, which um, means which shows that the, um, we can see that in southern Europe the conditions are becoming um, much more better in some places but the green parts have become less so like uh, as the climate cha will change that means some parts will be favorable for the, co the parts that are closer to the coast will be more favorable for um, for growing umbrella pine, and some areas will not. And even in South Africa, we can see that the green um, the green shading has decreased, which means that the that the that the district the climatic conditions will be much less favorable for growing um, umbrella pine. But we can see that in New Zealand that the the lime green is um, increasing, which means that the the there could be potential in growing um, umbrella pine in that region. Um, this current um, the current slide shows um, the current global domain distribution of um, umbrella pine. So the domain procedure uses a point-to-point -point similarity metric 
to assign classification value to a candidate site that um, based on the proximity and the environment and uh, the environmental um, space of the most similar records. So the domain defines discrete boundary for the climate envelope. So the domain is a better measurement of prediction even more than the biotrim because it essentially gives the percentage value and and as I mentioned that the um, that the umbrella pine grows mostly in the Mediterranean and in tropical areas that are mostly um, next to the water and the the percentiles show that the 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 shadings show that the where the climatic conditions are most favorable for growing the for the distributing the the crop. So this is the future distribution of the domain. Um, the the future global domain distribution of umbrella pine. Um, as you can see that the some the uh, some changes in the in places like um, the UK at the, the coastal area in the in Europe has a much more lighter shading which means that the domain or the percentile is increasing and also in South Africa we can also see a few highlights of lime green which means um, a higher percentile for the distribution of um, of umbrella pine. So this slide is the current bioclaim of the most um, limiting factors which shows um, the, um, the most limiting factors on certain parts of the um, of the of the world that um, that could be favorable and some not on the favorable side of growing um, of not growing oh, not only growing but also like the climatic conditions that would be best for the crop to grow in that area. So this slide shows the present bioclim in South Africa and the distribution is in, interpreted from the uh, the current climate data as the resulting from the um, from the bioclim ecological. So this model considers the environmental uh, envelope as I mentioned earlier and the and the distribution for where the climate appears to be suitable, which means that the, the parts that are most suitable for growing, um, for, for, for uh, the parts that are most suitable for the distribution of umbrella pine is mostly in the Western Cape and in some parts of the Eastern Cape um, and also in the Sutu, but the Sutu is not part of South Africa. This slide shows the, the future bioclim um, distribution in South Africa. So in, this shows that um, the favorability in South Africa is decreasing. You can see from the previous slides like there was more green than in this slide which means that the um, favorability is decreasing but we saw that on the global map that in southern Europe it was actually increasing because of the of a higher we saw that there was a, a larger area that was that was shaded in orange so in South Africa as the the distribution as the climate changes from now till 2050, it will become less and less um, favorable to have um, umbrella pine 
in South Africa. So as I explained, this is um, a closer view on the on the on what I explained on the global um, on the global scale of the domain and both for the bioclin. So the domain, this is a, a closer look at the domain for conditions in South Africa. And we can see the part that is most um, favorable for the distribution or where the umbrella pine is currently mostly found or the conditions that are based for it is in the Western Cape. And some other parts of it are still favorable for the condition for growing um, for growing um, for the distribution of umbrella pine, but not as much as the Western Cape. And this slide shows the future domain um, distribution of uh, umbrella pine in South Africa. So um, this is a current global eco crop of um, the current global eco crop distribution of umbrella pine. So eco crop is the is a list developed by food and agricultural organizations of the United Nations, which lists the environmental requirements of a very long list of plant species. And um, Diva has used some of this um, for assessing how suitable the crop is to a particular um, geographic um, region, which means that the the eco crop is um, mostly what would be considered as the most reliable using both the climate data whilst also including the physiological data. So the red um, the red in the image is mostly in tropical areas like in around the middle of the of the of the globe which indicates the areas that are mostly ex, ex, um, excellent for the sustainability of the crop so as i mentioned this slide is a this slide shows the um, the slide the this is a continuation from the other slide. This shows the future global eco crop distribution, which means which shows that um, still like the parts that are most favorable are still around the tropical belt of the of the world. This um, this slide shows the current eco crop in South Africa which is mostly red and it is mostly at the at the um, eastern side of the of South Africa. Um, this is the future eco crop and we can see that the climatic conditions are moving more inland and it is it covers half of South Africa which means that it is more more it is Coming more and more suitable for the sustainability of the crop. Um, so now I will I will explain the I will try to interpret or explain what the maps mean using the plot analysis, which is um, the potential, the limitations, opportunities, and threats of the of the species or of the distribution of the species which which might change because of or are changing effects because of the different climatic conditions. So there is a there's a growing over market for pine nuts which is boosted by the claim supported by the um, the US Food and Drug Administration because of the um, the seeds are, are said to be to have health benefits 
So the increase in market is caused by um, people believe that because it is proven that it has um, it limits the risk of coronary heart diseases and people are becoming more and more in, interested in in using pine nuts. So the other potential is that the seed can be sold for reforestation and the pine nuts have a long life cycle and can slowly adapt to the changing climate. So it means that the trees can withstand um, uh, the trees have a very high adaptive capacity because of how long it takes for them to grow and how slow how slow they grow uh, they, they grow how slow the rate of growth is so there has been um there's also been a steady increase in the demand for nuts in in developed and developing countries because of the some of the reasons that I mentioned earlier which is the health benefits that the nuts have and the trees can withstand winds and salt sea water salt sea air and once established will tolerate both wet um, and dry conditions as i mentioned earlier the penispine is characterized by a phenotypic plasticity it tolerates to harsh soils and climates but it has a low differentiation in growth parameters and it has low um, genetic variability so the plantation experiment of how adaptive the tree is to different conditions do not indicate any strong geographic structure in adaptive traits meaning that it has um, a low phenotypic plasticity um, so um, Although the climate profile has generally been agreeable with nuts, the weather shocks or political issues have hobbled the production of, um, of, of the crop. So these are some of the limitations to, um, to the distribution of the future distribution of the crop. And it is been said that there has been limited information about how the species would um, react to the climate, um, the changing climate. So it is this department is also um, also um, what's this? It is it is limited information. The mechanical harvesting of cones has moderated cone collection and it has increased economic interest which um, which is some of, uh, of the factors that I touched on earlier about the increase in interest of the pine um, pine nut and in, of in, in, increase in interest in pine nut and it is also um, said that the shells or the basin can be used to um, create fuel. Um, so the another opportunity is that the crop or the species is heat tolerant, and heat toleration is considered to be key breeding trait for increasing potential growth of stone pine, which make which makes the conditions very favorable for the growth of the species with the current um, warming of the globe so as the temperatures increase then the conditions are becoming more favorable for it which um, is also a threat because in south especially in south africa because it's considered to be an invasive species so as the temperatures is are increasing then it is more and more able to um to to overtake the crops that are that are native to the land and the last opportunity is that um countries that are um as i mentioned that 
there is an um, increase or steady increase in interest in pine nuts. So the developing countries or can use it as a mean as means to increase the production or the um, they can use it as means to um, to increase the economic value of the country or to develop the country's economy. The last slide or the last letter of the plot analysis is threats. Um, corn yield production is predicted to be well um, lost if the rainfall decreased by 30%. And another threat is that pest, um, exotic pest range expansion um, introduction of or the introduction of exotic seed bug um, causing the mess the massive dry cone syndrome which results in empty seeds or the drop in kennel yield. So the production and trade of pine nuts in Mediterranean Europe have been negatively affected by the spread of fungus which is another threat of to the production of pine nuts. And lastly, um, the 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 um, the species is not highly favorable of highly alkaline lime soil, so it does not thrive in soils that are highly alkaline. Um, the the last slide is my references. And these are all the sources that I used to collect my information. Um, that was my presentation on food security and the distribution of umbrella umbrella pine. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.